Right, well I've spent a few minutes, this is part two obviously, and the uh, the sun's come out now and just worked up quite a sweat. I, I carefully as much as I could cut down the pot and I cut around the, uh, the drain holes in the bottom. And apart from a couple of tiny little bits of damage to some, some of the leaves, or whatever you call the leaves, on these um, pups. So we've got that out all as one, um, one thing there. So, um, well, hello, some bug on the ground there. I think that's an earwig. But uh, as long as he doesn't bite me, I'll be happy. Still, I lived in Australia for many years, and there everything with a mouth wants to eat you and have your foot's dinner. So, just clear up a couple of these old fronds here. Uh, just biff them out to the side there a bit. See these really, really old ones, there's obviously nothing useful for the plant there and then. Some of the old ones will just peel away if you gently like that. There's a few leaves of things caught in here too. You want to sort of avoid that with all of the cacti and yucca and agave things. Because that can help rot set in. You know, a mess of damp leaves around the base of something. Remember these plants are adapted to very dry areas. And when we grow them in Australia, or so in New Zealand or England, it's well out of their comfort zone. So, uh, it is easier for them to succumb to various rot kind of conditions. But uh, these actually, I understand, are used as an indoor plant in England and Europe, where it's too cold to have them outside. outside. You can certainly have them outside in summertime, and, and you know they'll take a frost of a few degrees if it doesn't last for long. Um, but yeah, by between autumn through to spring you're going to need to bring them inside. Now I could try to saw those apart. Um, there's a pup coming up right between them and there's a few other wee pups here. They would almost sit. Now I'm just, you might notice I'm uh, not wearing rubber, uh, leather gloves or gardening gloves. Um, it, they can sometimes be helpful but sometimes um, because the, the big, the giant spines will go through the gloves anyway. So sometimes it's actually um, better to not wear gloves and just be gentle how you go and um, every time you feel a wee prick you know you know careful not to poke your hand in anymore so it, it can be better to not wear gloves um, the potting mix is very moist because there's obviously concern about um, legionnaires disease spreading from uh, can be spread from potting mix as well as garden soil and compost and things oh, well okay Apparently I pushed on that at some point. Um, it's snapped off at the bottom. That's probably not going to grow, so I think I'll just toss that to one side. If I can tease these out with a wee bit of root. Then they'll be better ones, uh, better candidates to pot up. Uh, here we go. So, See, this has all gone round and round. There we go. That certainly looks like healthy root. This old root doesn't look like it's very healthy. Here's a nice healthy one there. We'll um, just put that to one side. We're going to pop these up in just a minute. There we go. That's got some roots that look more alive than... Oh, there's a broken leaf. I can just pluck that off. There's two good ones. Doesn't look like much good leaf roots on this, but see this little bud here? Now that will be a new root coming. Oh, I've broken that one off right at the base again, so. As I say, I'm not terribly worried about these. I do have spares of them, so it's not like... Uh, and there's, there's a bit, see some light pieces of rooter look nicer than the others, so that's four we've got with a decent bit of root on, it should, should go with a very high level of success, almost 100%. Okay, 
Okay, it's a bit vicious with that one, a bit violent. It's already got broken bits. It's snapped off of a main piece of root there. Look, it's got a couple of wee bits of root there. That's, there's a good chance that one will grow. Because once you start to, if you gently tease this apart over a bit of time. Okay, now I'll snap that one off from its root, but see it's got a really good piece there. So that's, that's good. That piece I broke the base off from, or the top off from the base. See, there's a bit that looks good. And there's a bit. Ah, now see, if the. Just snap that little wee bit off there. This is a baby one, pup, whatever you want to call it, an offset. Uh, that seems to be a new. I'm not sure if that's a new root growing, but look. This is a new, even though it's only an offset, it's putting out offsets of its own already. So um, it looks like that's where it's coming from. It's just some root mass of something else, of the, of the parent plant. So there we go, we've got uh, two, four, six, looks like there's eight there. That was the eight around the bottom. Here's something curious. Here you can see an offset coming downwards. Obviously, if that had kept growing, it would have gone towards the bottom of the pot. Like these were, there was what, eight and a couple I broke off, so nine or ten. There's a couple near the top, I'm just going to try to wiggle these out. Now sometimes you can use a, a, a small knife, or you could use a sharp craft knife, or what, whatever is going to work for you. Okay, now, I sort of snapped it off near the bottom. Yeah, Jeff. I think we'll call that one toast. We've got plenty. Just trying to wiggle these out, and there's a reason I'm trying to wiggle them out. Now that one I got out with a piece of root. A uh, piece of pretty crappy root. We'll plant it anyway. And here's another one, which I've snapped off. Now, there was a reason why I didn't mind snapping off those. See, they were they were in this place along here. Because what we need to do, we need to get our old pruning saw. And I think these were two little ones that I got together. Um, yeah, no, no, these were two pups, two pups close together. Because uh, I've already, uh, once I had to go and buy a, a blue, green, one of these from the texture plants in Prebleton. And um, after coming back from Australia, and um, after that I've kept just cutting up little pups off them every few years. I haven't done this for about five years. Look at a pup there, quite a big size one. Might even leave that for now. And, um, oh, there we go, and a smaller one just off to the side of that one. So these can go in pots about as big as the one I cut out of. Um, but just for the moment, what I wanted to show, I've got my little container here. Um, it's actually a broken hanging basket, it's missing all the top. But what I thought it would be good for, um, I'm not using salvaged, reused potting mix in this case because I don't want a whole lot of little weeds to come up because it would be hard to um, hard to pick the weeds out from between the spines of these uh, slightly prickly little customers. And uh, as I say, it's just a, this is just a broken, a slightly broken hanging basket pot that I was given. So uh, I'll take a wee bit of that potting mix back again just for now. So this one's got the biggest piece of root in it, and it looks like it's already starting to throw out a sucker. Or, or a pup, whatever you want to call it. And I thought that I'd just put a bunch of them in here. It doesn't matter if some of them live and some of them die. In the middle, across to the middle. You can say, well, I could pop these all up individually, yeah, but I've got I've got spare ones already in individual pots, so. Another wee one there. That's gonna take a decent size hole, that one. got 
too many. Embarrassment of riches. up with soil, potting mix, but uh, there really are far too many here in this pot, but as you can see it was, the parent plants were grossly overdue for repotting, so I just sort of take today to do it, uh, take the opportunity to do it today. Some roots hanging out right at the top, poke them down. A wee bit of more of this stuff around them. And another root poking up, trying to get in below the ground surface. How many do we end up in the end? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We've got nine in this little wee pot. Well, I say little wee pot, it's about 10 inches or 250mm diameter. really have just bung them in this air pot. But uh, that one's sitting a bit high. But I actually think it's a bit anemic looking because it was actually totally inside the pot. It wasn't exposed to the light. Are we scattering? Here we are. That looks around about right. Um, now I'm just going to give that a wee gentle watering. Uh, once, and that's it, and I'm just going to sit this where it doesn't get much water. Certainly for a couple of weeks, um, they're less likely to die of lack of water than if rot gets into weed, like bits of roots are broken off and that sort of thing. Um, it can be sensible to clean your pruning shears with uh, something to serialise them, like these latest spirits. Um, I did mine the other day, so uh, before I did some more valuable plants. But there we go, that's them, and uh, I'll later go and get a couple of, uh, whatever this one was, about a 7 or 8 inch pot, about 175 or 100 and, uh, about 200 millimetre diameter pot, put this in it, and um, that can have, you can have potting mix I guess, what it means I'll shout it's a new potting mix, I'll leave that little one with a little pup off to the side of it. And then they will stay in that pot until they're needed to go somewhere or until I, uh, about another five years when they'll be massively pot bound again and they can be redone. The sun's coming out now, I think I'd better put my sun hat on. And uh, I'm going to give these a quick water and that'll be it for, t for, t uh, for today's filming. So there we go. A gavies. Um, these are gavies. Uh, yuccas we spoke about but I didn't show you, I'll show you that another day, which look almost identical, um, or certainly very similar, um, some of them do, but the ones we have to. Uh, certainly agaves and yucca all come from uh, the Americas, North America, Central America or South America, um, and we also spoke about the little, well this is only a little one, um, obviously they have the giant version of this is the saguaro cactus, you see with the cowboy movies and the big arms. Um, these are obviously little miniature forms which we tend to grow as indoor plants or as plants in a small small little rockery close to the house here in this kind of climate. And um, and the little Easter cactus, Christmas cactus, zygo cactus is another word I've, I've heard them called. And these can, you just pick off little bits, little bits break off anyway, and you let them dry out a little bit and put them in some potting mix, water them, but sparingly. And if your climate doesn't allow you to grow them outside all year round, you can grow them as an indoor plant. And they don't get huge. They, I've seen them not quite a metre, you know, two thirds of a metre by two thirds of a metre kind of thing, which is a, a large sort of indoor plant that can sit on a large shelf or something. That's all for now. So this is Catherine here in Christchurch, New Zealand, 43 degrees south latitude, uh, semi-maritime climate. And um, I'm going to pop these up. Um, 
you might worry that these have been sitting out in the sun for about five or ten minutes. Look, they're a cactus. They come from the Arizona desert or somewhere like that. They do not mind sitting out in a little bit of half sun for a few minutes. But I am going to get them in pots as soon as I turn the camera off. Okay? That's it for now.